So that's not High Fleet. This is the level editor for SnowRunner. <clears throat> I played a game and I like this game a lot, so I thought I'd make a map for it. The name of the map is going to be Krokodilsk, which is a fictional region in somewhere in Russia. And the map size is about 900 by 900 meters. It's, it's a relatively small map for a SnowRunner map. <clears throat> However, I keep it this small because packing the map, if you want to check it in-game, takes about five to eight minutes for this map size. So if I make it larger, it would take too much time to test it. And as you can see, it's not finished yet. So I got about a quarter of the area. This area is I would call 80-90% finished. I have to put on some, some small details into that. And everything is hand sculpted. So I didn't import a hate map like it would be easy just to import a hate map and then slap some roads and forests into it and then call it a map, but I like to hand sculpt everything myself. And the area you can see here that's um it's going to be a riverbed and it's floating in this direction. And this part is sort of, the geometry is almost finished in the river. And you have the garage area, you have a sawmill over here. This is going to be some, not sure what type, some type of resource building. You got a beach area, <clears throat> farmland. So let's take a look again. So I'm going to drive through the areas to show you some of the features and talk a bit about the map. So the idea of the map is it's going to be set in the late 70s in somewhere in the Soviet Union. So we'll start off with, with some of the cheapest trucks in the game. And the map is going to be designed around those cheap trucks so they can barely um, get through certain areas. So it's not going to be one of those maps that you just get the, the heaviest caterpillar truck or one of the gigantic Azov trucks and just plow through it. It's like, like early in the game, like in the Michigan map, we have basic equipment, you have to figure out your way. Now everything here is hand sculpted down to the to half a meter, so um, here's a really nice mix of, of different ground textures. This is the sawmill area, you don't start here, that's just my, my test run. But the FPS might not be really good in the recording, I'm not sure, because um, it doesn't feel that fluid to me. But that's not the map's problem, it's just to have the editor running and recording at the same time. Now this entire area is hand sculpted. Like, took quite a bit of time to um, get this nice ramp here going. Now while the game, it does auto-generate um, different types of vegetations for you, you still have to correctly hand paint it in the certain areas you want them to be. And I do that down to like this, like half a square meter um, precision. I really like this part. This might not look that interesting for, for um, people who are not that experienced with the game, but I spent quite a bit of time here of painting four different textures in this area and precisely fine tuning the mud over it so it looks good. <clears throat> and the mission structure of this map is going to be the the base scenario is you are sent by the by the local government to clear up the consequences of some radioactive accident in the area. So you have to tow out military equipment from, from certain areas and tow it to the base. And you have to collect radioactive boxes, like, like those concrete um, boxes with your crane and, and repair bridges and the standard stuff. So here's some extra nice, nicely painted in um, ferns in the area. 
So I'm trying to, to keep it realistic with what vegetation works in which area. Oh, this is some yellow farmland. Um, not sure what's the English name for, for this type of plant. It's basically, I just took the, the, the white plants and just painted the ground a bit yellow. So it looks like, um, it's like one of those plants that you make veg vegetable oil out of it. Give it that type of appearance. So then you have the bridge here. And you see the area over here that's not finished yet. And the cool thing is about this map, oh, like the technique I like to use, I'm really proud of it, is I'm not just using like regular mud where you can openly see, okay, that's mud and like this over here. That's mud and you drive through and it's going to be muddy. There's also a way in this game to disguise the mud. So like, so the, the area here is, um, <clears throat> is actually quite wet and moist. And if you sp drive heavy vehicles through that, you can actually sink in. But it doesn't show you that like from the beginning. So I think it's a more realistic way to paint in mud than just having like the, the obvious mud in the area. See now it's sinking in. Let's accelerate, see now it's stuck. And over there is a, a Tataran. If you experience SnowRunner player, you, you know that thing. Now the thing is, you're not going to get this thing as a reward because that vehicle is so good at crossing anything, it, it, it feels like a cheap playing with it. So when you get it as a mission, you get paid to retrieve it to the base, but you don't keep it. Because I think if you get a Tataran early in the game, you can just drive anywhere without any consequence. You don't have to pay attention to anything. So one of the quests is going to be getting that Tataran back to the garage with that vehicle, mid right now, which is going to be quite challenging because there's some really wet spots in that field that are not obvious until you get into them. Yeah, we like this place. There's sort of a road crossing where different roads meet, and now I put a lot of detail into making those fields nice and yellow, and then having hedgerows areas, so it looks like a compartmentalized field. Power lines with cables, tempered forests. I hand painted the mud a bit in darker tones, so it has that freshly dug mud. Um, the prince of Mark. Mm, that's going to be a bit more difficult. Not sure if I can get through that. So that's kind of the challenge in this game that you not always get through this the area you want to go. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be designed around small, weak, early game vehicles. And the pricing structure and the leveling up during the mission is going to reflect that. So it's not just going to be about getting the best truck and just plowing through it. Can I get through that? Might have to take another route because... Uh, I really like this place so far, like, like this road area with a little fog and different vegetations working together. Can I get through it? There's one more location I can show, the Wichita Garage, and that would be all for that developer blog. Oh, come on. So if I don't make it out of this mud right now, then I'll wait. really like this view. Like this organic, I think it has a certain like organic realism. Like I mixed, uh, mixed the, the tall, I'm not sure, those weird pine trees with, with, the, with the leaves up there. Then the smaller ones close to the road and I really like this place. So in this year garage, as you can see here, this is unfinished area. And I spend a lot of time here, like in the, the mud pits and the other areas, to hand paint. Like every stroke you see over here is hand painted mud for different textures because the texture, one material per quadrant on a map, not quadrant, um, for a piece of hate map, which is about 48 by 48 meters, can have up to four different textures. 
So I carefully mix those, like gravel, sand, some grass, and it's also some wetness. But if you just want to just drive around for the fun of interacting with, with the different softnesses of the area, I think you're going to have a lot of fun driving around. And this is the garage. So one more thing I would like to ask, if you're experienced or any type of SnowRunner player, um, let me know in the comments what type of what type of missions you liked in the original game and what type of well, situations you didn't like in the game. Like for me, for example, I, I never liked, like I liked the first Kola Peninsula map, Lake Kov. That was amazing, like those huge wide, wide open ice roads you can drive. But I didn't like Imandra, like a lot of players, I think, because it had these weird... Like, like really bad situations where you just have to drag something over, over frozen rock. So yeah, let me know in the comments about different types of quests so I can plan ahead what types of gameplay situations players like. So this was all for this video and I hope it was informative.